Hello everyone, my name is Ryan Beebe here for the Avalon Free Public Library and I'm going to be talking with uh, Dr. Gerald Casway uh, who will be in on July 21st at 7 p.m. to talk about how the Phillies and the athletics came to Philadelphia. So Jerry, can you tell us a little, about, a little bit about yourself? Well, I am a retired history professor from Howard Community College in Columbia, Maryland. I hold the title of uh, Dean and Professor Emeriti, and I am now retired, as I said before. Uh, and I have uh, relocated. I now am a resident, uh, local resident, in Cape May Courthouse. So uh, I am now uh, one, of, one of the locals. Oh, very nice, very nice. So, uh, so what inspired you to uh, uh, put this lecture together? Well, most fans of Philadelphia baseball are probably too young now to remember that as late as 1955, 56, there was a Philadelphia Athletics baseball team, which had a long and storied past and was probably the more popular of the Philadelphia baseball clubs. And uh, it would be interesting to see, you know, what their role was and how they came into being, and more importantly, what influence they played on the Phillies coming to Philadelphia. And the Phillies go back to 1883, and the A's in different forms go back to 1859, believe it or not. Although the A's, and most people have still a memory of the A's, it's really the, uh, the Connie Mack A's who were here from 1901 to 1955. But to those real fans, that team ultimately is sold and moves to Kansas City. They in 1968, and now that current team... The old Philadelphia A's is now playing in Oakland. So the Oakland A's are really the, the offspring, again, of the old original Philadelphia Athletics. So uh, you just said uh, that you think the, um, the A's may have been more popular than the current Phillies. Um, Philadelphia's got some really passionate fans, especially about their Phillies. Um, how would, why would you say that they're more popular? <clears throat> well, people always go to a more successful ball club. And the A's had two very successful runs uh, with World Series uh, championships and, and league pennants during the first two decades of the 20th century, and then from 1929 to 1931. Uh, and many, in the eyes of many, they probably had the greatest team, even better than the Babe Ruth Lou Gehrig teams of the 1920s. Anyway, so they had a much greater following, although eventually they had a very uh, sorrowful record uh, during the late 30s, 40s, and until they moved in the 1950s. Phillies, on the other hand, have had a miserable record. Um, in, in the 20th century, no team lost more games or came in last place more than the Phillies. Okay. Despite, you know, being in the 93 World Series or the 80 World Series, when they won the 2 one, the one Series, or 1915, or 1950 with the Whiz Kids. Okay. Uh, they had the worst record. The next worst record is the Philadelphia Athletics. So Philadelphia has quite a, a, a history and background of dealing with losing ball clubs. Mm -hmm. So when a, a Philadelphia baseball team wins, it's a big deal. So uh, how are they related, the Athletics and the Phillies? Well, the Phillies, as I said to you before, come into existence in 1883, and it's the same franchise that you know, it started in 83, we have today. The A's would go through maybe five different identities until you get to the Connie Mack A's of 1901 that belong to the brand new American League, which is formed in 1901. Their uh, first team is a, was formed by the Handel and um, Haydn Choral Society, believe it or not, mm -hmm. in 1859 as an athletic outlet for the members of that choral society. Eventually, they became a very competitive team, and they go through, really, three different identities up to 1875. In 1875, they become a charter member of the National League, but they couldn't pay their expenses. Hmm. And when they couldn't pay for their last Western road trip, they were kicked out of the league. Hmm. So from 76 to 1883, there's no professional Philadelphia Athletics baseball team. What's interesting is a new league is formed, the American Association. 
The American Association played baseball on Sundays. They had sold beer at the ballpark, uh, and they had cheap mm -hmm. tickets. Mm -hmm. So they were very, very attractive. And for the first time in six years, the second largest city in America had regained the baseball team. Mm. They were very, very successful. A lot of money was made. So the American, so the National League, who had kicked out the A's, realized, gee, we're maybe we're losing out on something here. And they decide in the uh, 1883 to give Philadelphia, and this is interesting, quote, the right of franchise. Hmm. They had the right to buy the franchise of the Worcester, Massachusetts Brown Stockings. Hmm. So not that the Brown Stockings moved to Philadelphia, mm -hmm. is that their franchise was relocated to Philadelphia. Hmm. And when it was relocated to Philadelphia, the new team was the National League Philadelphia Phillies. Hmm. So if it wasn't for the success and the financial windfall of the American Association A's, there would not have been a National League competitor, mm -hmm. the Philadelphia Phillies. Hmm. Now, ultimately, the American Association fails mm -hmm. by 1891 for a variety of reasons that I'll talk about during the lecture, mm -hmm. during the presentation. And as a result of that, that league collapses and the athletics disappear. Mm -hmm. The franchise actually moves to Washington, D.C., mm. okay, from the Washington Nationals in the National League. Mm. What's interesting about this is that there's only now one team in Philadelphia, mm -hmm. the Phillies. A competitive team, but no championship team. The end result is that when the new American League was founded, mm -hmm. they decided why not go into a town like Philadelphia? They could support two teams. Why don't we simply put a team in Philadelphia, and that's what they did. Mm -hmm. So they selected a, a guy who was very uh, manager in the Western League, Connie Mack. Mm -hmm. And they sent him to Philadelphia to see whether he could find a playing site and whether he could find backers for the team. Well, he found the playing site at 29th and Columbia. Mm -hmm. And he found backers, primarily Ben Scheib, who was a co-owner of the uh, Reach and Scheib manufacturing uh, company that made baseballs and other sporting equipment. Mm -hmm. And he becomes the president. But the problem was that Al Reach was the president of the Phillies. Mm -hmm. So why would Al Reach support, support a rival team in Philadelphia? And the answer to that is the Phillies were in financial problems. Reach was not getting along with his partner, Colonel John Rogers. Mm -hmm who was making a lot of bad and costly decisions, and he wanted Al. Hmm. And Ben Scheib was Al Reach's in-law, that their only children married each other. So they became, for the most part, more than in-laws. They were partners. Mm -hmm. They were almost like brothers. So when the opportunity came to sell the Phillies and get out of this, Reach decided to support Ben Scheib, and therefore the present Philadelphia Athletics was formed in 1901 with Connie Mack as the manager and Ben Scheib as the owner. But the interesting thing about this is that Scheib and Reach through their company, the Reach Company, which later we bought out by Rawlings Company, mm. just to carry it a little bit mm. further, they had a monopoly on making baseballs. They got uh, Reach before he sold the Phillies, reached an agreement with the American League. They would make, again, the baseballs that the National League would use, and that would be the Reach Baseball. While the National League, the older league, where the Phillies had belonged, they would use the Spalding Ball. Mm -hmm. Well, the Spalding Ball was made by the same people who made the Reach Ball. Mm -hmm. So they had the monopoly of both. So financially and politically, this was a good move on, the, on their part. So as you can see, the A's helped develop and uh, instituted the uh, process whereby the Phillies came into the into professional baseball, and the Phillies in turn helped again create the process mm -hmm. whereby the A's came back into the city in 1901, mm -hmm. and they shared the city up to 1955. So at, up until 1955, you're saying there was two Philadelphia two, teams. Two Philadelphia teams, the Philadelphia Athletics, uh, managed by Connie Mack, who managed the team for 50 years, 1901 to 1950. And the same year the Phillies won their second pennant mm -hmm. as the Whiz Kids, that was when Connie Mack resigned after that season. And uh, but up to that time, well, five more years, uh, 
the athletics are really bad, mm -hmm. and they're losing money. The stadium that they played in, which was Shy Park, which at one time was the a premier park, but by 1955 was really run down. They had renamed it Connie Mack Stadium, and the, uh, the Phils took over that stadium and will play there until 1971. I think it's torn down in 1976. Mm -hmm. To make they, room for the vet, yeah, right? Yeah. Not the vet. The vet was in South Philly. Oh. And um, the uh, Shot Park, well, Connie Mack Stadium was a 21st of Lehigh, right across from where Dobbins High School is. Mm -hmm. And the end result was that the, um, uh, the Phillies um, will have the city to themselves after 55, and still have the city to themselves, where the A's go on to Kansas City and then to Oakland. Hmm. So where did the, did they both play in Shad Park, or? The, uh, the Phillies played at 20, at Broad and Lehigh, what mm -hmm. they called the Baker Bowl, hmm. uh, which is about four blocks up um, east of Shad Park. Shad Park's at 21st Street, Broad Street's like 15th Street, mm -hmm. uh, in, or, off of Lehigh Avenue. And they were the first teams to really move away from the old hub of ballparks, which were sort of around uh, where Temple University used to be, mm -hmm. Jefferson Street, Master Street, Montgomery Street. Yeah. And they moved north. Hmm. The Fools were played until 1938, and their stadium was falling down, and they had a horrible team. Mm -hmm. And they will ultimately move to Shy Park in 1938. Mm -hmm. And what they go to Shy Park uh, when Connie Mack steps down the A's are ultimately sold. Oh, okay. So um, just going back to, um, going back a little bit, um, I was just curious. So um, at, at the time of like, you know, the, like maybe like the, the, the late 1800s, early 1900s, um, when a lot of these leagues were being formed and then broken down yeah. and formed again, how many leagues were there at one time? Um, I know you said the American Association, the National League, um, then the American League, I guess, came after that. But like in, eight, in 1891, mm -hmm. there was a player strike, and they had a players' league, a national league, and the American Association that the A's belonged. The original that generation of A's belonged to. Uh, in the 19, 1870s, there was also uh, again three uh, three leagues, mm -hmm. um, and every so often there will be a. a a, a striking league, a league that was trying to go, go out on its own, 1884, the Union Association. So um, there would be a time when Philadelphia would have maybe as many as three leagues mm. with as many as four professional teams. Baseball teams. Baseball teams. Mm. In the eight, early 18, up to the founding of the, Amer the National League in 1875, mm -hmm. Philadelphia had... Um, the old athletics, an older version of the athletics. Mm -hmm. They had the Philadelphia White Stockings, mm -hmm. and they had the Philadelphia Centennials, celebrating the country's centennial 100th anniversary. Uh, but when the National League was formed, those teams disappeared, mm -hmm. and the A's went in for that one year, and they were kicked out because mm -hmm. of the finances. Were any of the players from those smaller Philly teams, were they ever carried over to the A's or anything like yeah, that? Yeah, a number of them did. A number of the American Association A's that was formed in 1882 to 1891. A lot of the players who were playing semi-pro ball or were uh, playing with teams that were now defunct uh, would, would ultimately sign up to play for the American Association A's. Mm -hmm. um, and ultimately the Philadelphia, the first year of the Philadelphia Phillies. Yeah, I couldn't imagine being a, a baseball player back then, you know, with leagues going in and out, you know. I mean, of course, it's way different than it is today with enormous contracts. It was a way to make so, money. I mm -hmm. mean, that's really what it came, came down to. Yeah. And if you were young enough and you still had the athletic uh, durability and abilities, that's how you made, made a living. Yeah. And it was a pretty good living. Not like today. No, yeah, of course. <laughs> So how would you uh, how would you describe the legacy of these two Philadelphia teams? The well, the A's. Phillies are still playing ball. They've uh, uh, enjoyed an era of their most successful seasons, uh, where they won a World Series, appeared in two, and won uh, four or five you know league pennants. So they're now going through a rebuilding stage. So, but we have seen them turn the corner. And have represented the city very well recently. The A's, uh, the A's now were again are the Oakland A's. Uh, they've been there since 18, uh, 1968. 
and uh, they've won a number of World Series, and they've had a number of noteworthy um, players uh, play for them. They've always been a competitive team, and um, they uh, carried on the tradition that goes back to 1859 with the, um, the Hayden and Handel Choral Society, <laughs> you, might, you might say. So baseball is alive and well in Philadelphia, but um, again, you have to look back at its history and its origins and its influences. And hopefully in the talk, I'll, I'll be, t- be giving uh, on Thursday the 21st um, at the Avalon Library, we'll talk about how the athletics and Phillies in more detail came to Philadelphia. Mm. Well, Jerry, thank you so much for joining us today. I, uh, that was it? Yeah, it was really, <laughs> yeah, it was really uh, interesting. I'm really excited to hear the rest of your lecture, how the Phillies and the athletics uh, came to Philadelphia uh, on July 21st at 7 p.m. Thank you, Ryan. Look forward to it.